Is the US stock market on the brink of collapse? Today, we have some urgent insights to share with you. Renowned investor and market predictor Jeremy Grantham recently sat down for an exclusive interview on Bloomberg Wealth with David Rubenstein. In this interview, he issued a stark warning about the future of the US stock market and the looming possibility of a recession. His track record for predicting financial disasters is well documented, and his latest predictions have sent shockwaves through the financial world. In a market filled with optimistic voices and rosy projections, Grantham's perspective stands out as a cautionary tale. I think we are descending from the 2021 bubble, which was one of the great bubbles. And this should be normally the deflationary per period, the deflating period, uh, which is a function of uh, Will the earnings uh, decline? Will profit margins decline? Will the economy go into recession? And we will have a recession uh, running perhaps deep into next year and, uh, and an accompanying decline. Jeremy Grantham suggests that the United States has been experiencing a significant bubble, particularly in 2021, which he characterizes as one of the quote unquote great bubbles. He explains that the current phase should be a deflationary period where the bubble gradually deflates. This deflation, according to Grantham, is contingent on several factors, including the potential decline in corporate earnings, a decrease in profit margins, and the possibility of an economic recession. Grantham further forecasts that the recession could extend deep into the following year and could coincide with a decrease in stock prices. His perspective implies that the effects of the bubble have not yet fully dissipated and that there could be continued economic and market challenges in the near future. Record on these things is, is wonderful. It's uh, almost guaranteed to be wrong. They uh, have never called a, a recession, and particularly not the ones following the great bubbles. They prided themselves in, in stimulating the bubbles. They took credit for the beneficial effect of, of higher asset prices on the economy. They have never claimed credit for the deflationary effect of asset prices breaking, and they always do. During the discussion, Grantham expresses skepticism about the Federal Reserve's ability to accurately predict and respond to recessions. He criticizes the Fed's track record, stating that it has consistently been wrong in its predictions, especially when it comes to identifying recessions that follow major financial bubbles. For almost two years, a lot of smart people on Wall Street, big money investors, and former officials of the Federal Reserve have been saying that the United States is heading for an economic slowdown, like a recession. They thought the economy might not do so well. However, something interesting has happened. The job market in the U.S. is strong, and inflation has started to calm down because the Federal Reserve has raised interest rates aggressively. Some experts have become optimistic and believe that the head of the Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell, can make sure that the economy slows down gently, like landing a plane smoothly. Even the economists who work for the Federal Reserve changed their minds in July. They had originally thought that there might be a small recession, but now they don't think that anymore. But Jeremy Grantham, who is really good at predicting these things, is saying, don't listen to the optimists and the people working for the Federal Reserve. Grantham implies that the Fed has a history of being overly optimistic and taking credit for stimulating economic bubbles, while neglecting to acknowledge the deflationary impact when those bubbles burst. So it's like he's waving a caution flag, warning investors that there might be trouble ahead, even when others are feeling confident. It's a bit like saying, hey, let's be careful. Things might not be as rosy as they seem. Correct. Yes, that's correct. And you think he's done a better job recently in getting inflation under control? I think um, it's largely out of his hands. The forces work. I suspect inflation will never be as low as it averaged for the last 10 years, that we have re-entered a period of, of moderately higher inflation and therefore moderately higher interest rates. In the end, life is simple. Low rates push up asset prices higher rates push asset prices down. And we're now in an era that will average higher rates than we had for the last 10 years. Furthermore, Jeremy Grantham acknowledges that he had reservations about the Federal Reserve's handling of inflation, but he now believes that the control of inflation is somewhat beyond Powell's control. Grantham's perspective is that various economic forces are at play, 
and he expects that inflation may not return to the exceptionally low levels seen in the past decade. Instead, he anticipates a period of moderately higher inflation, and as a result, moderately higher interest rates. Grantham simplifies the relationship between interest rates and asset prices, explaining that low rates tend to drive up asset prices, while higher rates have the opposite effect of pushing asset prices down. He suggests that we're entering an era where interest rates will average higher than they did over the past decade. This observation implies that investors should be prepared for a different economic landscape with potential implications for asset valuations and investment strategies. I always like to say there's nothing more supremely irritating than watching your neighbors get rich. It is just irresistible to try and join in. And uh, when enough people hit the inflection point, it sucks in everybody. And they're, they're the great bubbles. They're the ones that are interesting. Mostly there's a nice balance between bulls and bears. And once in a blue moon, every 20 years or so, you'll hit an inflection point where enough people become bullish that people stop thinking about fundamental. Jeremy Grantham's response to the question about why humans cannot resist participating in bubbles highlights the powerful role of human psychology and social dynamics. He explains that the desire to be part of a bubble is often driven by FOMO, also known as the fear of missing out. When people see others around them profiting and getting rich in a bubble, it becomes supremely irritating and they feel compelled to join in to avoid being left out. Grantham also touches upon the concept of inflection points, which are critical moments in a bubble's development when a significant number of people become bullish and stop thinking about fundamental factors. These inflection points, which occur relatively rarely, are when bubbles truly take off and become the most captivating. Normally, there's a balance between bullish and bearish sentiment in financial markets, but during these inflection points, bullish sentiment overwhelms rationality. Understanding these psychological dynamics is crucial for prudent investing and risk management. No, I, I think we specialized in value management right. and, uh, and, and beating the benchmark. Uh, Dick Mayo and I happily won the first nine years in a row, which is a good way to start a firm, a GMO, uh, doing US traditional stock picking value. And we won by an average of eight points a year. Well, that produced a lot more money coming in, I assume. That and took care of, of our problems for a long time. But when did you become so well known for predicting bubbles or thinking that the markets were out of kilter sometimes? Was that because of your writings or because of your stock picking or your public speeches? Um, I started writing quarterly letters in 98, and 98, 99, of course, was a glorious, uh, a glorious bubble. And it just went up and up and up and up, and uh, we fought the bubble uh, all the way. So we were horrifically too early. That was a brutal two years, and the earnings were rising as well. So the market made a magnificent move from its all-time high in early 98, went straight up until March of 2000. And, uh, and our clients did not approve of us being early and uh, to a very considerable degree fired it. Grantham explains that his reputation for predicting bubbles and recognizing when markets are quote-unquote out of kilter grew in part due to his writings, particularly his quarterly letters. He points to the late 1990s as a significant period when he began these letters, coinciding with the infamous dot-com bubble of 1999. During this bubble, when the markets experienced an extraordinary rise, Grantham and his team took a contrarian stance, recognizing the unsustainable nature of the market euphoria. However, their caution proved to be too early, leading to a challenging two-year period as the bubble continued to inflate. Grantham acknowledges that during this time, earnings were also on the rise, contributing to the market's remarkable ascent. Despite their early warnings, the market kept climbing until March of 2000. Unfortunately, their contrarian approach led some clients to disapprove of their strategy, and as a result, they faced significant client departures. 
This response highlights the challenges of contrarian investing and the difficulty of accurately timing market corrections, even when the fundamentals may seem out of balance. Grantham's writings and willingness to take a stand against market exuberance played a role in establishing his reputation as a bubble predictor, even though the timing didn't always align with market realities. Not a single solitary person who fired us uh, came back uh, for the same product that they fired us for. Personnel changed, they inadvertently came back years later, but no one came back. We didn't lose money in 2000, we didn't lose money in 2001, and we did not, by the skin of our teeth, lose money in 2002. So by the time the S&P was down 50%, we had had three up years. Grantham reveals that despite their contrarian stance during the dot-com bubble and the subsequent fallout, none of the clients who had pulled their investments during that period returned seeking the same product. Grantham notes that it was primarily due to personnel changes within the client organizations that some of them inadvertently returned years later. However, none of the clients who had exited the firm during that challenging time came back for the same investment strategy they had previously rejected. Importantly, Grantham's firm managed to navigate the challenging market conditions of 2000, 2001, and 2002 without incurring losses. In fact, they achieved positive returns during those years. By the time the S&P 500 had declined by 50%, Grantham's firm had already achieved three consecutive years of positive performance. This track record likely contributed to the firm's ability to attract and retain assets. This response highlights the challenges of regaining client trust once it's lost, even if an investment strategy ultimately proves successful. Grantham's firm's ability to weather the storm during the dot-com bubble collapse and subsequent years of market turmoil showed their resilience and contributed to their asset growth. Jeremy Grantham's advice to avoid the U.S. stock market stems from his belief that the market has been experiencing significant bubbles, notably in 2021, which he characterizes as one of the great bubbles. He anticipates a deflationary phase marked by potential declines in corporate earnings, profit margins, and the possibility of an economic recession. Grantham's skepticism about the Federal Reserve's ability to accurately predict and respond to economic conditions, coupled with his concerns about inflation and rising interest rates, leads him to offer a cautious outlook. His perspective serves as a warning in an environment of optimism, suggesting that investors should be prepared for potential challenges in the financial landscape.